All right, we're diving back into some more C sharp and really getting into the language this time. And I'll show you how I go about learning a programming language. If you're learning Python, if you're learning C, if you're learning Ruby, any programming language, really, this is in general how I would go about doing it. So the very first thing we're going to need is the basics. And this is just a Hello World program. I added a little bit to it from the last time. If you are coming from the previous video, uh, check that one out if you haven't uh, in the playlist. But all that I did is I added a namespace and uh, a class. This is, file is program.cs, so the class is program. And added a main method and then just did the console.write line there. So just to reiterate, if I were to run this, I should see Hello World to the screen. So, the very next thing I need to do, I'll, I will want to do, is I want to get some basics of the language. Now, by no means do you have to use a textbook nowadays in 2022 to learn a programming language. You can learn any language absolutely for free on the internet. So, what I'm going to do is go to a site that I like to use as a reference and initial learning material, because usually it's able to get me up to speed pretty quickly on a language, and that is a site called W3Schools. So I'm going to go there and pull up C Sharp. And we see here that on the sidebar, it covers a number of topics. So this is going to really help get us started with the language because we're going to need to know these things. And before I get into writing programs, I want to get at least some basic familiarity with the language. I don't have to necessarily go through every single section on here, but let's start off with some of the basics. So let's see the intro section here. This is just about C sharp, which we don't really need that information for right now. We've already gotten started and wrote our first uh, program in C sharp. So really what we want to do from here is figure out the basics, like how do you write a comment? So it looks like it's just slash slash. Let's confirm that here. So if I try that for myself, we see that it changed the uh, the color, which means it's probably interpreting it as a comment, which is perfect. We'll just make sure that it runs okay. And yeah, that should be, we should be good with that. And I did actually install a VM now for this thing. So I got it in a VM at this point, something I did off camera. But other than that, everything is the same with the setup. You can also do a multi-line comment with that. I won't practice that here, but these are just good things to, to be aware of. So this is pretty standard in a lot of languages, that syntax actually. So it should be pretty easy to remember that, but we could always reference it here if we need to. But yeah, let's see how do we declare variables and stuff like that. So it explains that, you know, C is a strongly typed language, so we're going to have to tell it the data type. So these are the valid data types. Um, well, th these are some of them. Int, double, char, string, bool. So we can try to create some of these uh, different ones. Let's try to create one of each. So close out of this, and let's start expanding on this program here. So let's declare a string and I'll just say my string. This is my string. That will be the value of it. Let's try to create some more data types. So let's see, it did underline this. Um, assign but never use. Okay, well, we'll rectify that in a second just by using it. So we could just say, let's try to call that variable, right? We declared it up here. So let's write that to this uh, screen. So my string. And this is just some basic stuff, just playing around with the language, getting a feel for it, doing the most simple and basic stuff. So this is my string. Okay, cool. That was written to it. Let's start uh, creating some other variables. We'll try the other data types. So integer my int equals zero, ooh. My int equals, we'll say it equals five. And bool, my bool equals false. Sure, we could go with that. And let's say double 
My double equals 7.0. So there we go. We got a few different things there. Let's see what happens if we try to add an integer to a string. My guess is that it's going to complain about the data types not matching up because I don't think that C Sharp will make that assumption auto convert it for us. We're probably going to have to tell it that. So let's see what would happen if we try to add a string to an integer. Very common issue you might run into in a programming language. So it actually did not error out. Okay, that is very good to know about C Sharp. I did not expect that behavior, actually. So what it did is it simply concatenated it to the end. So basically it converted the integer into a string, it seems which is really interesting that it did that. Let's create a second integer. So int my second int, and this one will be equal to three. And let's say that we just try to add these two together. So we would imagine this would be eight, right? Um, all right, so we'll run this. And yeah, we do get eight, but if we were to throw in one of these other things there, this would probably throw it off, like if I had my string first. And then we had it. Let's see what it outputs for this. Yeah, see, it's converting, it says my string 53. And the reason for that is it's converting, automatically converting this, typecasting this into a string and this into a string as well. So it, it's trying to add together, this is my string plus the number five as a string plus the number three as a string, right? So this would be the exact same thing, right? As if I did something like this. Let's see, let's see about typecasting. How do we typecast? That's important to know as well. This is just me guessing how to do it, but it looks like I'm wrong on how to actually do that. So let's look up, how do you do like uh, typecasting? Let's see if we, yep, here we go, typecasting. Let's see. So implicit and explicit. Implicit casting is done automatically when passing a smaller size type to a larger size. Okay, so there was some implicit type casting going on, perhaps. Uh, let's just take a look at this from here and see explicitly how do we do it. Okay, I wrapped the wrong thing. So yeah, let me just modify this and instead wrap inside uh, the, the data type inside here. So... Going back to the code, let's instead take these parentheses and put it around string. And we'll try to add them both together. Let's give this a try. Let's see here. It's still highlighting it in red. Let's see what it says. Looks like it's gonna error out. Let me just try running this. Not sure what the hotkey is to run this yet. But let's see if it'll run. So yeah, there are build errors. So if you get an error, this is important to note, it'll, it'll show it here. And it says, cannot convert int to string. And then that's how you would go from there. You just want to Google what those errors mean. Uh, let's see. So that would be the next thing I would do is may as well just use the browser in here. That's what I should have done from the start. But if you, if you Google it, cannot convert int to string. 
C sharp. And then this is going to give us some information on why that failed and what we could do instead. So stack overflow. And it looks like when you want to convert an integer to a string, you would need to use this to string method here. So let's try that instead to see if that fixes our, our issue. And I would do that in whatever your error message happens to be. You could literally just Google that error message and then the language that uh, you're coding in. So in my case, C sharp, and you should be able to find that info. That's the general way to go about it. So let's try the two string. Let's see what gets wrapped in. Uh, okay. So let's get rid of this beginning part here. And let's say to string. And then same thing here. What I'm trying to do is just typecast these uh, integers into strings. So it says 53 instead of eight when I add them both together. Whoops. To string. So let's try that. And the weird thing is that, oh, okay, that's why we had this typed wrong. There we go. And that's the nice thing about using an IDE or code editor is you'll be able to tell by the coloring of stuff if you did something wrong a lot of times. So now we'll try to run this and no errors this time. And we see 53, we see a five and a three. So that is the correct way to typecast those, right? And if we wanted to do the same thing with like um, this double into an integer, we'd probably be able to do that quite simply as well. So if we just go back to where we we're trying to turn everything into strings, but instead Let's say, let's say we have my int. We'll keep that as an integer. Now let's say we wanted to add five and 7.0, but we'd want to display it as an integer. We could typecast my double into an integer. Let's give that a try. Let's see, that looks that looks good to me. Let's try it. And we get 12. So in that way we can typecast a double into an integer. If we didn't do that, I think we probably get the answer as a double. So we would get 12.0. Let's just test that theory. Just playing around with this stuff and getting hands on is really the best way to learn this stuff. You don't want to just read out of a, a code book or um, an exercise online and not put your hands on the key. You would definitely want to put your hands on the keyboard. So looks like it does display 12. Let me just make sure. Yeah, so it does still display 12. I wonder what the data type of that is, right? So let's just define a variable, right? Let's make our own variable. We'll call it sum. And that will be my int plus my double. And let's see, how do we display? Oh, and we got to say what it is, right? So if we call it a double, if we display some, maybe it's just showing it like that. Let's see if we, if we do it like this to ensure that this is going to be a double. Oh, and yeah, let's see. Let's just see if this works or if it errors out, if we have to typecast it or if it'll do it for us. So yeah, it's not showing 12.0, probably because my guess is because this is a zero, it's just doing that anyways. What if this was like 7.1? Would it show 12.1? Yeah, so that's just how it's displaying it. It's not displaying it as 12.0, it's just displaying 12. But the data type is still a double, I do believe. And let's just confirm that. So... It's another thing we can Google, right? Um, we could say C sharp. Let's say uh, print data type C sharp. 
Someone asked the question. Stack Overflow is your friend for sure. And let's see what they say. So they, you have a get type. So let's try get type. So hopefully you, you see like the, the methodology here, basically. So let's try that. Run it. And I don't know any of this stuff, by the way. I know like literally nothing about C Sharp. I'm just Googling this and, and doing it. Yep, so double. It is a double. So perfect. So yeah, that's just playing around with different data types. You know, going forward in this series, what we can do then is, uh, let's just take a look back here. We can start going into how do you do like if and else statements, for loops, switch statements, arrays, and stuff like that. That's what we really want to focus in on next and see like how do we do it on C sharp and you know just getting comfortable with that stuff. This is going to be our foundation, our building blocks that's going to allow us to get into the really fun stuff in this series. So hopefully that gives you a good solid starting point. You know, whatever programming language you're trying to learn, go ahead and do this. And even if the language you're learning is not on W3 schools, no problem. Uh, there's other sites like this out there that will have like, you know, a good reference like this on how to do these very basic things. But yeah, definitely don't just read through, like I could have just read through this stuff, but instead we're typing, we got our hands on the keyboard and we're also going off the beaten path, experimenting. I'm like, okay, well, what if I added these two things together? What would happen right now? Here's another way to convert things as we see here, right? You also have a, uh, just like we had the two string method. We also have a two double to int 32 and, and all of that. So there's different ways to do this um, data type conversion, okay? Using some built-in methods, right? To Boolean and, and so on. So multiple ways to do like stuff like typecasting. We can see user input. That'd probably be pretty helpful as well. But yeah, definitely get caught up in the series. If you didn't see the videos that came before this, um, I'll link this playlist on screen right now. Go ahead and check that out. And uh, there's always Black Hat Python, which has a lot more videos as of the time of the recording right now than this one does. If you really want to get really far in depth with, you know, pen testing and programming, let's just say. So yeah, go ahead and check out one of those playlists on the screen right now. I'll see you guys right over there.